Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Fujifilm X-E3. It was introduced in 2017. It was replaced in 2021. This won't be a full-on review. Um, for something more in-depth, you can go to DP Review. A lot of sites have talked about this camera in a lot more detail as far as the specs. The reason I got it, I needed a yet another camera system, like the proverbial hole in my head, but I wanted an RF style system with old school controls and 4K video. So this one has an EVF, um, but it is rangefinder style, nice and small viewfinder off to the left. At the time, my choices for what I was looking for, I could get a Fujifilm X-Pro3, which was a significant bump up in money. Um, it has almost identical specs. It has, it's weather sealed. This camera isn't. It has the hybrid viewfinder, so it's you know got some glass right here, but it's also got electronic displays. Honestly, I have not used the hybrid viewfinder. It sounds a little weird but it's gotten rave reviews. Maybe I'll rent one or something. I don't know. Uh, the other choice for the old school type uh, controls was a Panasonic uh, LX100, probably the LX100 Roman numeral 2. It's got a 21 megapixel sensor, but only about 17 megapixels are usable at a time. I won't get into too much about that. It has a fixed Leica zoom lens, a really nice lens, but it's a fixed lens rather than this with the interchangeable uh, Fuji X mount. And the other choice really was one of the Fujifilm X100 series. I think the V is their current one. Um, very comparable specs, but it has a fixed lens. You can interchange it. So... Anyway, even if I end up just using this lens, I've got the flexibility if I want to put a honk and zoom on it or a little pancake if I want to be a little more stealthy than what I've got on here. Anyway, this is what I decided on. The supply chain seemed to be drying up. The big uh, vendors were just saying that it was no longer available. There were a lot of rumors online that there wasn't going to be an XE4 because this was eating into the X-Pro purchases too much. Um, so I ended up getting the body used from KEH. Um, I was really pleased with it. I hate that what you see is not actually pictures of the camera you're buying, but honestly, they described it honestly. I got a great kit from them. No financial interest in them, just letting you know how my buying experience went. The lens I bought new, I got it from Adorama. This little guy has a 24 megapixel X-Trans CMOS 3 sensor. X-Trans is just Fuji's sensor. CMOS is the only part of that I really understand, and I guess is the third generation of it. Uh, it's an APS-C sensor. It's 23.6 by 15.6 millimeters, so it comes out to a 1.5 uh, crop factor, more like a Nikon than Canon's APS-C. One thing that's weird, Fujifilm makes the X-Series, all of them, Rangefinder, the ones that look like SLRs, they're all APS-C until you go to their GFX series. Um, they call it medium format. It's bigger than full frame, a little less than what people who use 120 film consider medium format. I guess it's medium format. It's bigger than full frame. They don't make a full frame camera. Gosh, if this thing was full frame, that would be sweet. But for whatever reason, they decided to jump to the next level. And the controls, the f-stop on most of the lenses, they don't all have that. You know, if you use one of the control dials for that, but they have the aperture ring is on the lens, 
It's got the shutter speed dial right here, exposure compensation dial, even more old school. The shutter button has a cable release screw in it, so you don't need some proprietary weird electronic cable release. You just screw it in there and away you go. So those are what I mostly use. That's why I got this camera. I wanted the old school style uh, controls. So if this little switch is off of auto, if you take your lens off of auto, you're in aperture priority mode. If your lens is on A and you take the shutter dial off of A, you're in shutter priority mode. You take them both off of A, you're in metered manual mode. Now if this switch is swung over to auto, use your front control dial and you've got the usual selection of a bajillion scene modes. That's not fair to it. It's, it's a really good range of stuff. On the back, it has a fixed 3-inch uh, touchscreen. It's about a million pixels, I think. Um, honestly, I don't use that very much um, because it's got this little joystick that replaced the four-way controller. The kind of wheel and four buttons is replaced by this little joystick. So that's kind of cool. You know, you throw it into the, into the menu and you can use that or you can use the touch screen. Oh, I forgot. I have the touch screen disabled and it's also a button. It's got quite a few other controls. The XE4, they really went even more minimalist on this. But it's got a front control dial, and almost all of these are programmable, which is also a button. A rear uh, control dial, which is also a button. It's got a function button on the top deck. And then it's got what defaults to, a to autofocus lock, and then a Q button. Anyway, it's got a really nice electronic viewfinder. Um, it's 2.36 million pixels. Uh, it has a nice diopter adjustment. So if I want to ditch these guys, I can actually see what I'm doing in here just by dialing it in. ISO is from 200 to 12.8K. And if you expand it, it goes from ISO 100 to 51.2K. It has a mechanical shutter um, and it's mode dependent, but it can go all the way from 15 minutes to one four thousandth of a second, and then a bulb mode which tops out at 60 minutes. If you're using strictly the electronic shutter, um, it goes from 15 minutes to one thirty-two thousandth of a second. And bulb tops out at one second. It's a little bit weird. They're also that's also mode dependent, and in a lot of modes, it will combine them to get the best of both modes using the mechanical and the electronic shutter. Flash sync is at one one hundred eightieth of a second or slower. There's not a built-in flash, but it ships with this little guy. This is the EF-X8. It's what they ship with the camera in lieu of a built-in flash. Um, it's powered by the camera body and uh, it's guide number 8 meters at ISO 100. If you are in the native mode where it's 200, I think they said that's guide number 11. This guy will recharge uh, via USB, but it does ship with a charger. I got it with a factory battery, but I turned on and bought a couple of these Wasabi powers, so I had some spares. It has a single SD uh, slot, and you want to make sure you're using a nice fast one. 4K video is writing pretty fast, so you want to make sure that you're ready for it. I've barely touched the surface of what this guy can do. The film emulation modes are really, really sweet. Their standard is Provia. Provia? I don't know how you're supposed to say that. Velvia, Astia, Classic Chrome, a uh, bunch of settings. And then it's got Acros, which is nice, and then Monochrome. The lens um, is a 23 millimeter prime, and with a crop factor that comes out to uh, 
35 millimeter. Uh, this one is pretty, pretty fast. It's an F2 lens, stops down to F16. It's a sweet lens. Uh, one thing is that if you get into the Fuji X system for autofocus lenses, which this one is, although it's also able to be manually focused, um, Fuji has not opened up the specification for the X mount. So the only third-party lenses you're going to find, and there are some really nice ones, are manual focus. So if you buy into this system and you want autofocus, you're going to be getting Fujinon lenses. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, some people aren't crazy about the build quality of some of the big zooms, but I don't have those yet, so I can't really speak to that. Anyway, I wanted to introduce you to my new toy. Um, I really do like this camera a lot. It's got things where I expect a camera to have things. I'm not having to dig through menus unless I want to. So I'm going to hang on to this bad boy and shoot a lot more with it. My next video is going to be revisiting a camera that I shot with a while back. So until then, I'll see you then.